Hey, this is Mr. Janes, and in this video we're going to be talking about naming angles. So in front of us here we've got a number of points and three angles. We've got one angle here, we've got one more obtuse angle here, we've got one angle here. If I asked you to pick one of those three angles and tell me which one you picked, it would be pretty easy. You could just tell me, oh, I picked angle B, I picked angle G, or I picked angle F. Now it's easy because each of these angles uh, has a different vertex. Now the vertex is this point right here uh, from which the two rays right here and right here of the angle diverge. So this is called the vertex. Okay, And these three angles all have a different vertex. So you could say uh, I picked the angle of the vertex B or I picked the angle of the vertex G. Pretty easy so far. But what if we had angles like this? In fact, there are three angles in this picture. There's one here, there's one here, but also this whole thing is one giant angle. So if I asked you to pick one of those three angles and tell me which one you picked, if you said, well, I picked angle G, I wouldn't know what you're talking about because all three of these angles have the same vertex, the same vertex at point G. So that's not gonna be enough. Instead, what we're gonna do is use three letters to denote our angle. So for example, if you pick this angle right here, I'll make it green now, you're gonna call it angle C, G, D. So this is angle, I'm use a little angle symbol, C, G, D. If on the other hand you picked this smaller angle down here, well that's gonna be angle D, G, E angle D, G, E. Or maybe you picked the largest angle, right here, this whole thing, angle C, G, E. Angle C, G, E. In all of these cases, we have started by picking one point on one, one side, one ray of that angle. Next, we pick the vertex, kind of the point of that angle. And then lastly, pick a, another point on, on the other side of that angle, the other ray. So CGE would work for this biggest angle right here. Let's, um, let's test this out a little bit. What if I wanted to name this angle right here? What would I call that? Hmm. Well, I would call it angle G, C, F. Angle G, C, F. Because I'm starting with one side of the angle well, a point on one side of the angle, so G, uh, the vertex C, and then the other side, uh, F. Um, I could also call it F, C, G. F, C, G is just fine there, as long as I keep that vertex in the middle. What if I wanted to name uh, this angle right here? This angle right here. Well, I could call it angle C, G, F, I wanted to. Angle C, G, F. I could also call it C, G, D. Now I can use D because I'm just simply going from one side of the angle to the vertex to a point on the other side. So either F or D is fine. So angle C, oops, sorry. C, G, D is, is also a fine way to name that red angle. Now some books like to do this. They like to put a number inside of an angle to kind of make it easier to, to notate. So this angle right here, Normally, I would call C, G, F. It would be C, G, D. Angle C, G, D. It doesn't matter. But I could also call it angle 1 because there's a 1 right there. Similarly, this angle right here, I would normally call angle, um, let's see, I could call it F, G, E. Keeping that vertex in the middle. Um, but since they put all two here, I could just call it angle two. I have that option, and some books like to use this. Let's go ahead and take some formal notes on what we've just learned. An angle is two rays with the same endpoint. That endpoint is called the vertex. So right here, uh, this point right here, A, would be the the vertex of this this angle, and this would be the vertex of this angle. Now, commonly, we're going to use three letters to, to note our angles. I'll put the angle symbol first, then we'll call this angle C, A, B. We could also call this 
angle B A C. It doesn't matter as long as we keep the vertex as our middle letter right here. That's fine. If I try to write something like angle C B A, well, let's see, would that work? C B A, no, that would not work. That's not the same angle. And that's wrong because I'm using B as my vertex when really A is my vertex here. So that would not work. Gotta keep that vertex as my middle letter. There are also a couple other options that we'll use sometimes. If you've got an angle uh, that only has, or a vertex with only one angle, such as this right here, you can just call this angle A. Now if I added another angle over here, maybe point D, I couldn't do that because now I, wasn't, I wouldn't be sure which angle is referring to. But if there's only one angle by itself with its own vertex, you can use, use one letter. Also, if your angle is labeled with a number, like this one is right here, uh, then you can just call it angle and then put the number, so angle two is fine. These are only used in very specific circumstances. When in doubt, use angle and then three letters right there. Next, let's talk about some different kinds of angles uh, in terms of how many degrees they have or their, or their measure. Go ahead, you've probably heard these terms before, acute, right, obtuse, straight, and reflex. So pause the video here and try and draw examples of each one. Uh, and if you can, actually describe them below your figure that you've drawn. Um, pause the video now. The answers will be coming up in five, four, three, two. Here are the answers. All right, so we've got, let's see here. We've got our acute angle uh, with measure less than 90 degrees. Remember, uh, acute things are small, so acute angles measure less than 90 degrees. A right angle uh, with exactly 90 degrees. Um, perpendicular, we often call that. Uh, obtuse angle with a measure greater than 90 but less than 180 degrees because a 180 degree angle is a straight angle, sorry, straight angle, and creates a straight line, right? Half of the, the full rotation, so 180. A reflex angle is anything over 180 degrees uh, but less than 360. In medical terms, if a joint is in reflex, then it's past its normal limit of flexibility. So if, you're, uh, if your knee's in reflex, you probably should go see the doctor because it means it's going backwards. Here's just five more vocabulary terms to end the video here. So, uh, two angles that share a side or have a common ray are called adjacent, A-D-J-A-C-E-N-T. So perhaps you've got one angle here and another angle here. They are adjacent because they share the same ray. So this ray right here in the middle is shared between them. Another example is right here. These two angles, I'll put one in red right here and one in blue, are adjacent because they have the same kind of ray uh, in both of them right there. They're adjacent. These two angles right here are not adjacent. So if I was talking about maybe this angle right here, I've made it red, and this angle right here in blue. They're not adjacent because they're not sharing the same ray. They've got their own separate rays, their own separate sides. Angles with degree measures that, at, that sum up to 90 are called complementary. Complementary. And angles with degree measures that sum to 180 degrees are called supplementary. Sup Lementary, supplementary. So complementary angles, for example, if you had maybe a, a 40 degree angle, and maybe you had a 50 degree angle over here, those two would be complementary because they sum to 90 degrees. Of course, they could also be adjacent. So for example, if you had um, you know, a 30 degree angle here and a 60 degree angle here, Notice that when, when put together, they form this nice right angle, this nice 90 degree angle. Supplementary, they uh, sum up to 180 degrees. So for example, maybe you have a, um, an 80 degree angle, and maybe you've got a 100 degree angle. 80 plus 100 is 180. And again, these could just be, this could be um, adjacent. Maybe you have a 120 degree angle here and a 60 degree angle there. Notice they form a, a straight angle, so they sum to 180 degrees, and they are supplementary. One way to remember this is that think about complementing someone and supplementing someone. 
Complimenting means just to say something nice to someone. But supplementing, think of like supplementing their income, means to give them something, maybe money. And supplementing is better than complimenting. That's just nice words. And this is giving you something like a present or, or money, maybe. So complimentary isn't as good as supplementary. Supplementary is 180 degrees. Complimentary is 90 degrees. So that's how I remember it. Supplementing is better than complimenting. So supplementary is greater than complimentary. 180, 90. Our last two words here. A pair of opposite rays formed by two intersecting lines is called a, are called vertical angles. Vertical angles. Here's an example right here. If I have that line and this line, these two angles in red right here are what we call vertical angles to each other. Similarly, this angle here and this angle here are also vertical angles to each other. On the other hand, a pair of adjacent rays formed by one line and a ray, so for example, let's say I've got these two, they're called a linear pair. Linear pair. And a linear pair is kind of like vertical angles, but instead of being across the vertex from each other, they are adjacent to each other. So maybe here's one angle, here's another angle. Those two angles form a linear pair. Or maybe this angle and this angle form a linear pair. Notice how they're adjacent. Uh, they're also supplementary. Uh, and they're, they're on the same line you can think of. To practice using these terms, go ahead, take a look at figure one and figure two, and try and find as many um, adjacent angles, complementary angles, supplementary angles, vertical angles and linear pairs as you can in these two figures and write them down on a separate sheet of paper. We're not going to go over this right now, but we'll talk about it next class. See you then.